Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to a bit of an odd satellite, which is the satellite, of course, we were building in the previous episode, or at least testing out. In today's episode, we are going to be finishing off the satellite, which I have already named the Iron Hook, and we are going to be also configuring the battleship into its new form, and sending it once more against the Onyx Watch, hopefully with renewed power. So the idea with the satellite, as I was trying to explain in the previous episode, is it's going to be just a resource harvester, nothing else. It's going to be expensive because all of my things end up being expensive. It's going to have a theme to it, as always, but it's not going to be used for combat for one sole reason. The Onyx Watch do not deal well with satellites, spaceships, and submarines. If you use any of these, you pretty much win this campaign incredibly quickly and incredibly boringly. The battles are just shooting down from the atmosphere any kind of shot, slowly killing the Onyx Watch and then moving on to the next enemy over and over again. In one of the seasons, I believe maybe season two of From the Depths, a long time ago, I actually did this tactic and pretty much won the campaign in a matter of episodes using the Korn satellite, which was a laser satellite. So to avoid that, we are building a scrap satellite. The theme of this is I want it to look like a scrap vehicle. A vehicle not only made of scrap or hastily built, but which is actively converting the very world itself and the enemy ships into scrap metal. Of course, it's nowhere near finished, and you may notice a lot of thrusters on this thing, including thrusters which actually don't work in space. The reason is, this satellite can actually launch itself from the ocean. We can build this on the floor and it can launch itself into space. I thought that would be a cool idea. I tested it out not really expecting it to work, and it worked. So that's pretty much where we are right now. So I'm going to do a little bit of explaining, a little bit of building, then we're going to go into a montage, a speed up segment, and then go off and start fighting the enemy. So what exactly do I want to do? What have I got left to do with this ship? I think to make it completely scrappy, what we're going to need to do is start having things like the spares processor, and, if I can actually find the thing I want to find, the Crystal Growth Farm and the Scrap Smelter. Now, the Scrap Smelter is pretty awesome in my opinion. The Scrap Smelter burns natural resource to turn metal resource into scrap resource. It burns natural to melt down metal and turn it into scrap. We're actively scrapping any ship that dies nearby, and if we have some vehicle supplying this thing with metal, we're just burning the world in space. Which I think is a really cool idea. Now, it currently has way too much electrical engine power, purely because, well, I needed to get this thing from the ocean into the skies, but also, these things, I believe, do actually cost engine power, at least that's my understanding. Let's have a quick look see at the engine power we're currently using, and then let's start building some of these. So there's a base. Uh, without this component, the scrap smelter is useless. This, the effects of adding these components stack, so add as many as you like. Not quite sure if that's actually using it, although, are these even on? Yes, they are. I can see the smoke coming out of them, so that's pretty darn cool. Either way, we have a lot of power, so we can mess around with anything we absolutely want to. So we're going to be adding a couple more of these to start off with, because this resource zone we're currently on doesn't actually have any scrap, or at least I don't believe it does. So this way, I don't really want to convert too much, I just want to convert any excess, so we are making scrap with any extra metal we have. Let's have a quick look-see. Does this have any scrap? No, it doesn't. Now we're turning the metal into scrap, and look at that lovely pollution we're creating. That's exactly the effect I want. This is going to be a derpy little satellite. We're going to have them above every resource zone, including the original one, slowly turning the world into scrap and everything lovely like that. We could also potentially make ships up here and then drop them. Now I've said that, that's exactly what I'm going to do. We're also going to have a building zone somewhere on the satellite. So, this is the base structure. It's called the Iron Hook, like I said, because, well, it looks like a giant iron hook. And now, let's get into finishing this thing off so it's fully functioning. We also need some oil. 
what they called oil lines, oil resource gatherers. They are called oil drills. Of course they're called oil drills. That only makes sense. So we do need those somewhere as well. So with that, like I say, let's get into the montage. Let's build this thing up to a near finished form at least. And then let's start working on the battleship and getting into some battles. Okay, then I think at this point we are pretty much done with the base design for the satellite. There's still a few things I want to do, as usual. From the Depths is really one of those games you can keep on building and tweaking and changing to your heart's content and never really be done with any design. But for now, I'm pretty happy with this. The main problem I had was trying to make it look decent while still going for a very spindly, very kind of spider-like 
design, everything trying to be sharp looking, everything trying to be quite scrappy, whilst still actually having a structure, and I think I've done okay. And look, I've even finally added a radar, and we can see pretty much the entire universe with it. Or at least this small world we're apparently on, which ends here, because it might very well be flat. Either way, we can see a very long way, and I am quite happy with the design so far. A few things I will be changing. I'm not sure how to do this core section here. I think I'll be trying to make it look a little bit more crystalline in the future, a lot more blues and whites, just to make it look a bit more like a power core in addition to the harvesting section. I really am happy with this idea, having all the different resources on their own hooks, just adding a bit of style, and I love the idea now of harvesting the world from the comfort of space, watching all the peasants down below as we just completely strip mine the world from safety. It seems like the true coward's way, which of course is my way through and through, but I have had a bit of an idea. What if? We change the current float lines, the current supply line, for tiny little satellites. Each tiny little satellite having a tiny little radar on it, and then just have them floating in space. That may be something we do in the future, but that is definitely for next time. Enough of building static, non-fighting things. Now let's move over to the battleship, upgrade that a little bit, and then head off into the enemy. One thing I did notice is the enemy is actually a lot further than I thought it was. It is a level... Uh, what level is that? I can't quite see there. Either way, it's a exploration team containing a trebuchet, a pinnacle, the things I can't pronounce, and thank you for everyone who tried to tell me how to pronounce them. I think I've decided I'm just going to call them forever, the things I can't pronounce. And another pinnacle. So, nothing really too scary still. Surprisingly, they're not really sending scary things at us. I'm hoping that will change in the future, but... What is this? Houses. That's a Watcher's Outpost, and then over here we have another resource zone on the ground. So if you ever want to make a little base down here, we very well can. This is natural oil and crystal. We don't really care about crystal. Oil is, well, we just don't use it at the moment. We have no vehicles at the moment which use fuel-burning engines, and natural we have loads of as well. So don't really care about that at all. And actually, all the forces seem really weak at the moment. If we push forwards once we upgrade our thing, our battleship, we could very well take this amazing resource zone by the end of the day and make another satellite there. So for now, I think I'm going to produce all the float lines, get them all connected to this satellite, make a second satellite and put it on this resource zone, and make it all connected up as well. So I'll do all of that very quickly, and then we'll descend the battleship into a few fights and see if we can survive. Well, hello there, old friend. We have a bulwark currently heading towards us, in addition to a pinnacle and a buttress. So where exactly is this fellow going? By the looks of it, it's not actually trying to engage us, but it might be just heading over there to reinforce one of the tiles. In fact, yes, that's exactly what it's doing. So that is fantastic to see. The Onyx Watch is now creating bulwarks. It's just perhaps this might have been the very last group created before the godly mode was engaged. That's both terrifying and really exciting. I can't wait to send the battleship against a true battleship. Here we go into a battle. So the supply line is basically finished now. Only a few more things to set up and all three of the resource zones will finally be connected so that we can start making ships a lot more frequently. But right now we are under attack by the trebuchet, two pinnacles, one buttress and the thing I can't pronounce. So. Let's get our lovely fireworks nice and close to the enemy, let's get ourselves close to the enemy, and let's start this fight. Now, I am a little bit concerned because I'm fairly certain, if memory serves me, originally I thought I had never seen a trebuchet before. However, I think I might have, and I think they use advanced cannons. If this is the case, we are actually going to be in quite a bit of trouble. Shields have now been changed so that penetration through shields is based off projectile speed, not armor piercing. 
and the advanced cannons are very quick to fire, so there's a good chance our battleship is going to be incredibly vulnerable to the trebuchet, and in fact, we even have similar volume, so that should actually be a pretty good battle. I'm actually a bit concerned we might lose the battleship, to be perfectly honest. Either way, let's start off with the usual stuff. Oh! Incoming very fast missiles. Oh, that almost took out one of our turrets there. Thankfully it didn't. I'm hoping that goes down pretty darn soon. The first of their ships taking all of the shells and a load of the missiles, and it is very quickly dispatched. The second one, yep, AI dead already, and then the final lovely pinnacle here, at least what I think is the pinnacle, yes indeed it is, is now being just bombarded with EMP, and down it goes as well. Okay, Battleship, you did well against the tiny enemies. This is what you should be concerned about. Very similar size to you. Oh, wow, that is actually not what I thought it was, but it is advanced cannons. Thank you for me shooting first. Okay, most of those are still being deflected. Oh, huge explosion in the center there. We just lost a bit of ammunition, I think. This is more like it though, a proper battle. We have just lost our right turret. No we haven't, no we haven't. We've lost some of it, it's been damaged, but we haven't lost it yet. We're still firing at full capacity. No we're not, the front turret there has been damaged enough to go down, so is the side turret. One of our fireworks however has spawned in to make it a little bit less fair. I also believe our missile silo has been damaged. But down they go anyway. The lovely firework there just making mincemeat out of it. The fireworks really are the most aggressive part of my fleet. And now everything kind of looks like Lego. Oh, that's weird. I'm guessing that's a way now to save on CPU. The degraded mode now turns things into Lego at long range. Didn't expect to see that, but okay then. Those advanced cannons, though, did make me think, perhaps using advanced cannons in addition to cram cannons might be a good idea, because that was a lot of damage against quite a heavily targeted opponents. That turret's down for some reason, so clearly some damage was done on the underside. We lost one turret, this was damaged at one point, that is still damaged, and for some reason the missile stopped working correctly. Now I'm very scared to actually fight the Bulwark, because that does use advanced cannons as well. Either way, a pretty fun fight. The trebuchet was eventually defeated, so now I can get back to sorting out the supply lines and thinking about how I'm going to be changing the battleship in the future. Also, is that one too- yeah, that- is, the, is it this turret that's one too short? One of these turrets has one barrel longer than the other, and I think it's this one. I saw it in the last video, and I'm fairly certain some comments as well mentioned about it. Yeah, totally intentional to test your guy's knowledge. No, it's not. Is one gauge higher than the other? Perhaps it's just still damaged. 1868, 1868. I don't know what's going on there, honestly. Perhaps one of the other barrels is too short. Oh, that's all. It's got a different ratio of barrels. That's all it is. Okay. I'll sort that out and then everything will be fine. Well, here's something a little bit weird. Both of these barrels are exactly the same in terms of gauge, and they have the exact same amount of barrels attached to them. However, this one is a little bit longer than this one. This was mentioned in the last episode, and I was so sure I had made them equal, but apparently they're not, despite the fact they should be. I have no idea why this is, so that's something I need to look into, apparently. I just noticed it again after that battle, so yeah, need to work on that, apparently. Hello, we have made yet another enemy. It seems like we must have crossed over the border in that last battle. So now we are against the Fortitude. I'm not sure if we've seen one of these before. I have a feeling like we may have, but I'm not completely sure about it. Either way, let's just get straight into it. Just the battleship on its own, I'm sure we'll be able to handle it. And this is the Fortitude. 
Ooh, I don't think I have seen that, because that is a really cool set of flares, and that was a weird thing for my camera just to do. Ooh, one nasty shell hit there on the front, along with all of that EMP hitting the underside there. Did it even get one shot? Why are you shooting that way? Not quite sure where that's shooting, honestly. Maybe it's an anti-missile gun? Because you can do that with advanced cannons. One more enemy defeated, thus showing the firepower of our cram cannons. Okay. One more tile cleared, then. And back to sorting out all of this. And so the resource chain starts. The Iron Hook, the second one, is now approaching the resource zone, so all of the resource from the initial zone is going into that. That will then transfer to the next set of float lines all the way over to here. The second Iron Hook is now at the resource zone and thus is being sent into space, which does look kind of absolutely awesome even if we are in the rain, because this tile is always raining, apparently. So that is now all three resource zones being collected from, and almost connected. I think there's like two left we have to actually connect properly now, just doing all the numbers and the connection points. How high am I? As soon as it gets to about 1,200, we can stop the propulsion. And there we are, and opposite propulsion on, which then balances us out, and there we are at the correct height, although we are slightly off the resource zone now, which is a little bit silly, honestly. Moving out. But... Here we go, and we're on the resource zone, excellent. So now that is harvesting giving it to this one, which is giving it to this one, and then that will be giving it to this one as soon as it's in place. Well, this is pretty terrible. The supply line is actually now connected, however, we do have a problem. That bulwark, which I thought was defending this area, is now heading towards us, and behind it is another bulwark. We are going to have to defend ourselves against two of the strongest ships in the Onyx Watch Navy, but I'm afraid we are going to have to do that in the next episode. Yes, I am actually all out of time right now. This was more time consuming than you may think. A lot of messing around with supply lines and stuff, it really isn't the most fun, but it does take a lot of time. But now that's all sorted, we can start actually sorting out all of our ships for the fight. So thank you so much for watching, if you have enjoyed the video then of course likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel and most importantly shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Next time, we possibly face our deaths.